The Sunday Roundtable has reported for duty this morning and joining us right now, Democratic political analyst Marianne Marsh, Republican political analyst Rob Gray. Great to see you guys. Let's go. So we just heard from Lydia Edwards. If she wins the state Senate seat and Michelle Wu wins the mayor's race, would this be a seismic shift in Massachusetts politics, Rob? Well, if she won, certainly it would show that the tectonic plates are moving because the, the last three state senators there are, are Italian-American males. Um, you know, so it would be a big change, of course. Marianne? Um, progress, yes. Seismic, I agree with Rob. We don't know. It wasn't until after Ayanna Presley's win for city council years ago that we saw all these other women of color coming in. You look back at that now and say, that was seismic. Of course, Michelle and um, and Lydia both would be the first women of color in both of those positions. Mm -hmm. It would it would be welcome news, but it will take some years to see if other people, more people, more women of color follow in their wake. Then it would be size. And of course, with mayor, I mean, either way, you're going to have the first female mayor of Boston. Yeah, so that's right. going to be a shift, no matter who wins the, well, the it, general it, election. It, which is mayor. where it was going to go. Lydia said this morning in the in the chair that you know we're, we're a female majority city. Boston is in a minority majority city. Right. So boom, you got you, you got both hits in the in the mayoral race. Oh, a hundred percent. But again, we th we still are so woefully behind everybody else. We haven't elected a woman governor in Massachusetts. Boston's the biggest city. I mean, I can go on and on and right, on. Right. So yes, we are making progress. To Rob's point, the tectonic shif uh, plates are shifting, but are they shifting up that much? All right. Item two is uh, Anissa Sabi George. She's denouncing the super PACs, even the ones that are supporting her. Michelle Wu is only calling on them to her word, stay positive. Marianne, let me start with you. What's the what's the real story here. Well, we talked about it a little bit last week. Anissa is clearly trying to inoculate herself against the um, when the, her super PACs that support her go negative. She's trying to inoculate herself against the backlash. Michelle Wu is now pointing out saying, OK, guys, be positive. They're going to go negative no matter what. So then you look at it and say, Michelle's going to say there went negative. I told you. And Anissa's like, they support me, but I have no control over them, which is technically mm -hmm. true, right? Mm -hmm. So the question is, when this negative campaign happens, who's going to pay the price, Anissa or Michelle? Rob, it is all a smokescreen. <laughs> Candidates love to say super PACs are terrible publicly. And then behind the scenes, they encourage them because they count on super PACs to do the dirty work for them, which is fundraising and going negative against their opponents. All a smokescreen. They love it privately, hate it publicly. Do we know yet whether Michelle Wu has a slight advantage with the super PACs money-wise than, than Asabi George does? We don't know in the general. We don't. Not yet. It remains to be yeah. seen. I mean, they both had active super PACs. I, you know, they'll, they'll, they'll probably be equal. But, but Michelle uh, was on, on record having put an op-ed in the Globe during the primary that says, look, folks, let's run a positive campaign. I think she's really wedded to that. We'll see if it lasts. Okay, we have a battle. Acting Mayor Kim Janey wants to move some of the homeless from Mask and Cast to a hotel in Revere. Revere Mayor Brian Arrigo says she is simply shifting her political and PR issues to his city. Who's right about this, Rob? Well, Arrigo's right. Janey's trying to shift the methadone mile outside of Boston, you know, put three tenths of it in Revere and two tenths of it somewhere else and get rid of the problem here. But we should go back to the core problem, which goes back to Mayor Walsh and the state even before that. The, the bridge fell apart to the Long Island shelter. Nobody fixed the bridge over the years. And that's in part what caused this problem. Had we been keeping up with infrastructure, had public, state, and uh, city government been doing what it was supposed to do, we wouldn't have this problem in the first place. It is a regional problem, at least that's what Lydia Edwards just told us a few minutes ago, right, Marianne? She's right, but you're not going to fix it in a regional way or even with Revere or anybody else without long negotiations and long planning and all that. To Rob's point, there's still no bridge to Quincy. Mm -hmm. There's still no ferry to Quincy. It's not happening. Mm -hmm. This is a Boston problem right now. you got to fix it in Boston. You control Boston. And when you see people like the Greater uh, Boston Food Bank spending $1 million on security because of what's going on in Mass and Cass right next to their facility, not on food that people desperately need, but on security, this is long overdue. It's a mess Marty Walsh left, but, you know, Kim Janey's got to try to clean it up before she leaves, but it's going to fall on either Michelle or Anissa to fix it. Well, there is a large Haitian population in the city of Boston. 16 Boston politicians, including both Asabi George and Wu, are condemning President Biden's handling of Haitian immigrants, immigrants trying to enter the country at the Texas border. The Democrats call his actions barbaric and racist. So, uh, Marianne, let me start with you. What's the political fallout? Well, let, let me say two things first. It is legal in this country to apply for asylum. Everyone is entitled to that, and it is not happening. Trump denied it, and 
Biden has been denying it too. That has to change, number one. Number two, it is sadly the treatment that has happened at that border is yet another example of how Trump has really corrupted law enforcement, whether it's the Border Patrol, ICE, the Secret Service, the FBI, local law, to legal departments, uh, police departments, it's, it's the same. So this is one more mistake. This is one more mess that Biden has to clean up after mm -hmm. Trump, and he's starting to do it, but he's got to do a better it's, job. It's President Biden's issue now. I mean, he's, he's, he's shepherding and the he, ship here. And he, on Friday, accepted responsibility for it and says he has to clean it up. But it is a long list of cleanup after Donald Trump. Rob, uh, how about Kamala Harris? How is she doing as the borders are right now? I mean, that's one of the political implications here is that, you know, if Biden doesn't run again, how much is this injuring her? She's hiding out in the bunker while this is supposed to be her job. Of course, Biden's hiding out, too. But it's catching up with him. He's managed to alienate left, right, and middle on this. His approval rating with independents nationally is down to 37%, which is terrible. This is playing into it along with Afghanistan and COVID.